right by these amazing current bushes, if I say so myself. There's another really nice patch of Stropharia. There's a fatty coming up. And the appearance of all mushrooms will vary a little bit depending on the amount of moisture and the temperature and possibly their food source. So here's another cluster kind of showing all the different stages from a very young button to a kind of good eating size and to one that's still edible but a bit too large. And you can see we got lots more on the way. All right guys, finally, let's take a look at how you could propagate more areas to fruit with the wine caps. And so the traditional way would be to use some spawn. So whatever material could be straw, grain, or wood chips themselves is inoculated with the mycelium here. Here's some I just dug up and you can just use that itself. Another way you can do it if you were gonna harvest these anyway, First of all, don't cut them at ground level, pull them up. That's kind of a misnomer. You don't want to leave this little bit in the ground because it's just going to rot. On top of that, we can make use of it. So you're not going to eat this little part, so you're going to cut it off. You can see it's nice and firm on the inside, and you can see that little bit of browning, yellowing, where it's starting to go a little bit old. And that's, uh, that's one way you'll be able to tell. This one you could just cut off that bit there. But the bottom of the stipe here is still lots of good mycelium attached to it. And the stipe itself, it's, if it's fresh, can regenerate the whole new mycelium. So there's one. And it could be one of these really old ones that you're not going to eat anyway. Might even, uh, in the spring we don't really get them, but in the fall we definitely get fungus gnats that eat these guys. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted because we just had a really hard rain, like a freak rainstorm, and I can't find one of the chickens out of this flock here. The little black and white one that's an um, Ancona is the breed. And it's uh, kind of an independent one and does run off and do its own thing. But I just can't seem to spot it in here or outside anywhere. So I'm worried that the, the sound of the rain might have muffled uh, the sound of a predator and something might have got it. But I really hope that's not the case. Anyway, so here's some young ones that we could take stipes off of. You can see how that looks really good to eat. Okay, so that's basically ready to go as your propagation material. If you didn't have a lot and you wanted to stretch it out maybe, you could cut it into pieces. Like that. Okay, so let's go see what we do with those next. So I got some fresh wood chips here. Uh, it's in this path area, so it's gonna have high traffic. Uh, so I'm not necessarily expecting it to fruit a lot, but it should help to bind all this up and start to break it down. Let's see, what do we have here? Some type of uh, willow. Um, a holly. And it looks like a rhododendron. All perfectly good stuff. Uh, 
you know, soft woods with a large mix of bark, actual wood, small branches with leaves and thinner bark. So that large variety of particles is great. But this stuff you can see it wasn't very chipped down very well. It wasn't a very strong chipper obviously. And so we have lots of the stringy material left. And I would use that for your paths that you walk on. This is really good for that application. It's gonna last longer. Uh, you know, it's gonna stay firm underfoot for a while. Whereas opposed to if you need something for a garden bed where you wanna grow on, it's gonna take quite a long time to decay this. Okay, so speed that up. We can add our saprophyte. Basically all you're gonna do, just move it back, plant it like you're planting a seed, and cover it up just so it's not exposed to UV. It's as simple as that. So maybe you could do one or a piece every couple square feet, just to help it propagate. And remember, this is all one genetic individual. When the mycelium of these two pieces meet, because of that, they'll seamlessly fuse together and become one individual again. It's a really cool thing about fungi. So if you started a mycelium on the east coast <laughs> and one on the west coast and somehow they got over the mountains and stuff and met in the middle, it would be one single organism. So anyway, so I'm just going to keep on inoculating this new patch and uh, I can do the same exact thing with the wood chips and easier way, an even easier way to do this is to go ahead and just sprinkle it around before you put your fresh chips down and then just cover it up with the fresh chips or sprinkle it on top and then maybe I don't know rake it in or something put this fat one over here all right so if you want to do a really large amount inoculate that here's another way you could do it you could also inoculate an entire pile of wood chips just spread around the inoculation points. Let it uh, take it over, let it colonize it with the mycelium. And then you have a giant pile of spawn basically that you can spread to other places or use as you would otherwise. So here's a walnut tree that's been growing for a while and we've been mulching it and it makes a huge difference for that, especially with all this grass around here. But I just wanted to show you it's the middle of April here and we have these cup fungi coming up it, and they all seem to just cluster around the edge of the wood chips which is a pretty common pattern for saprophytes and these are ascomycota so closer related to morels than to guild mushrooms you can see that um <clears throat> well maybe you could okay there you go you can see that kind of patchy rough surface that's the pore bearing surface where the ascos form the wide caps which are basidio mycota and some uh, tulips have been munched on by deer just chasing these guys out of the other yard here I think I might have spotted that other chicken really did give me a good fright here been looking for it for the past 15 20 minutes but I think I see it you guys see it <laughs> walked right past it um 
Looks like it hid under this little bit of grass when we had the the pouring rain. And it might be something down there to nest because some of these do actually lay in the afternoon quite frequently. Man, really happy to see this one. He's a small one that doesn't eat a lot but lays regularly. Oh, what the heck? How is there two eggs here? Well, that's an old rotten one. I'm guessing that's the one I just laid. So it must be going broody and probably laid this other one here a couple weeks back when it was let out. Huh. Is this your secret place? Look how wet it is. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. Quit messing around. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today. If you have any questions about growing mushrooms or wine caps in specific, please put them down in the comments below. Uh, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys in the next one.